Ukraine's armed forces seem to be destroying a lot of Russian tanks with the expensive shoulder-fired missile systems that the West has given to Ukraine. Here are the details. Reuters reports that U.S. President Joe Biden's recent gift to Ukraine of $350 million worth of U.S. weapons brings the total of U.S. assistance package to $1 billion over just the last year. The donation includes a large number of Javelin anti-tank weapons. The Javelin system has a day sight as well as an infrared sight for targeting armored vehicles at night. The missile's computer locks onto the target. A small charge blasts out of the tube before the powerful rocket engine ignites. Here, the folded fins pop out to steer the weapon to the target. The weapon can be fired directly at buildings, or the operator can set it to top attack mode, in which case the missile flies up to 150 meters before slamming down on a tank from above. Once it gets close to the target, the missile's first warhead detonates to activate the tank's reactive armor. After the reactive armor explodes, the main warhead detonates against the tank's thin top armor, where the shaped charge of the warhead punches a hole through the armor, causing the tank's ammunition to detonate. The Javelin is a fire-and-forget system that can destroy tanks up to 2 kilometers away. It can defeat armor that's up to 80 centimeters thick. The launcher can be reloaded, and each missile costs either $80,000 or $175,000, depending on who you ask. Ukraine has been having success in using Turkish-made drones to infiltrate the airspace above invading Russian convoys and turning the convoys into exploding fireballs. Here are the details. The Wall Street Journal reports that the Ukrainian Air Force is crediting its new Turkish-made drones with destroying a large number of Russian weapon systems with guided bombs. The chief commander of Ukraine's armed forces, Valery Zaluzny, posted a video of such a drone strike turning multiple Russian trucks into a fireball, adding the comment, Welcome to hell. The video was posted on Facebook with text that says the Bayraktar drone struck a Russian convoy near the city of Malin, around 97 kilometers northwest of the Ukrainian capital of Kiev. A few such videos show multiple bombs hitting Russian weapon systems in wooded areas and in convoys. The drones seem to be very effective at exploiting long Russian military convoys stuck in traffic jams. These stuck convoys present the drones with the opportunity to target an explosive-laden target like a supply truck. Once the truck and its explosives are hit, the massive explosion often blows up multiple surrounding vehicles and troops. Russian troops have been seen deploying anti-aircraft missiles effectively against such drones. Ukraine began receiving shipments of the drones in 2019. The drone's primary function is to use its high-powered cameras to view the battlefield and laser-correct artillery strikes. It can stay aloft for 24 hours, flying at a maximum altitude of 7.6 kilometers. A remote pilot can fly the drone from as far away as 300 kilometers in good weather. A few of Russia's feared thermobaric missile launchers have been entering the Ukraine, which means that large parts of Ukrainian suburbs could soon be vacuum-bombed, leading to massive civilian casualties. Here are the details. The Guardian reports that Ukraine's ambassador to the U.S. says Russia has started using thermobaric weapons to bomb Ukrainian cities. This comes in the wake of multiple social media posts showing TOS-1 thermobaric missile launchers entering Ukraine. The TOS-1 vehicle can fire 24 thermobaric missiles in 15 seconds, and each missile can destroy buildings within hundreds of meters of the detonation point. The missile can be fired up to 6 kilometers away. When it hits its target, an initial charge distributes an aerosol made up of very fine material, which could be anything from a carbon-based fuel to tiny metal particles. This highly flammable cloud is then ignited by a second charge. When the cloud erupts, it creates a massive shockwave, as well as a vacuum as it sucks up all surrounding oxygen. The blast wave can last for significantly longer than a conventional explosive and is capable of vaporizing human bodies. It is, however, designed to destroy defensive positions, which means it causes massive damage to city buildings, while also causing many human casualties. Dr. Marcus Hellyer of the Australian Strategic Policy Institute says it's only a matter of time before Russia starts using thermobaric weapons, as their use is pretty standard in terms of Russian warfare tactics. Hellyer said he expected to see more thermobaric warfare in Ukraine. As the war in Ukraine continues, Russian President Vladimir Putin has ordered nuclear deterrence forces on high alert. Here's what that means. After invading Ukraine, Russian President Vladimir Putin has escalated the situation further by ordering the transfer of deterrence forces to a special mode of combat duty, thus raising the specter of nuclear war. While the ambiguous order could simply be a threat to the U.S., one strategic alternative is that it could mean Russia is dispersing intercontinental ballistic missiles from their bases and fitting them to long-range heavy bombers, according to one senior fellow at international affairs think tank, the Carnegie Endowment, cited by the Financial Times. 
The order could also involve moving tactical warheads from centralized storage facilities to deployment locations as a threat to Ukraine. However, alternatively, Pavel Podvig, a senior research scientist at the UN Institute for Disarmament Research in Geneva, suggested on Twitter it could mean that the Russian nuclear command and control system received what is known as a preliminary command, which essentially means connecting the wires of the system so that if a launch order was issued, it would go through. In peacetime, the system is there, but the circuitry is disconnected, Podvig explained. Even if you press the button, nothing would happen. However, if Russia believes it entered a threatening period, the National Command Authority can bring the system into a working condition, connecting the wires. Podvig added that the preliminary command could also trigger visible actions such as submarines leaving ports or weapons loaded on bombers and bomber dispersals, but this is not necessarily the case. Everything could stay on the level of circuits. Importantly, he concluded by saying that the order is not something that suggests Russia is preparing itself to strike first, adding that, in his view, a first strike has never been an option. Crucial context for all of this is that Russia has the world's largest nuclear arsenal, with the Wall Street Journal citing a February 2002 report by the Bulletin of Atomic Scientists and outlining that Russia has more than 1,500 warheads deployed and almost 3,000 in reserve. In September, for instance, CNN reported Moscow was testing a new nuclear-powered cruise missile just months after separate reports that it was testing a doomsday drone designed to cause massive tsunamis filled with radioactive material. The nuclear-powered missiles, codenamed Skyfall, are around 8 meters long and feature nuclear engines which allow them to fly long distances. Russia claims the missiles can take any route to their target, and the U.S. says it's designed specifically to get around U.S. air defenses. Meanwhile, in April, CNN reported on Russian tests of its new Poseidon 2M39 drone torpedo. Unlike conventional torpedoes, Russia says this behemoth can snoop around enemy defenses to sneak up to enemy coastal cities. Once in position, the huge device would set off its massive nuclear warhead to create large tsunami-like waves, inundating cities and large areas of coastal land with radioactive particles, making the land uninhabitable for decades. Both the torpedo and missile are part of Russia's drive to modernize its strategic nuclear arsenal. As of now, the live situation with these weapons is that, according to The Guardian on Monday, a statement by Kremlin spokesperson Dmitry Peskov could be seen as an indication that Putin's decision to put these nuclear forces on high alert was a kind of high-stakes diplomacy. Peskov clarified that the decision came in response to various Western warnings there would be collisions and clashes between NATO and Russia. Either way, Guardian World Affairs editor Julian Borger writes that the challenge for NATO allies now is maintaining the support Ukraine needs for its survival while making clear Putin has a way out of the crisis rather than climbing up the escalation ladder to the point where it takes on a logic of its own. Russia has repeatedly objected to NATO's eastward expansion, however, according to Borger, if, after a series of apparent economic and military blows, the Russian leader has come to see the subjugation of Ukraine as essential to his political survival at home, political off-ramps such as guaranteeing Ukrainian neutrality may now be impossible to negotiate. For more news animations and explainers, hit the subscribe and bell button to join the Tomo News family. Thanks for watching.